Hey, good evening. It's uh, Thursday, April 4th, and welcome back to Everyday Talk 24-7. Thanks so much for being here. Got some great questions tomorrow for Q&A Friday, so I hope you'll tune into that. Appreciate your prayers as I prepare for that, because they're just really super questions. Tonight, we're going to look at the flip side of what about anger. Last night, we saw how anger builds these walls between us and God. God's always there, but we, we make these relational barriers ourselves. Well, tonight, Paul shows us how to smash those and how to free ourselves from the chains of anger. Because anger is one of those things that just wraps itself around us. And it won't let us go. But God shows us how to break those chains. So in verse 32 of chapter 4 of Ephesians, Again, a familiar passage, it says this. Instead, that is, instead of being caught up in anger, which Paul says to get rid of, instead, be kind to one another, tenderhearted, graciously forgiving each other, just as in Christ, God forgave us, gave, forgave you. And these sound, in our time, these sound like weak words. They are not brothers and sisters. They are some of the most powerful words that can be given to us because they represent the way that Christ deals with us. That's where power is. Kindness. There's three things listed here. Kindness, tenderhearted compassion, and forgiveness. Kindness, that's the fruit of the Spirit. Kindness brings to us to mind God's hesed love, his loving kindness that we see expressed all throughout the Psalms. It's kindness, instead of the spirits of bitterness, kindness kills anger, breaks the chains of anger. Tender-hearted, compassionate. In Psalm 103, verse 4, we read, God redeems your life from the pit, and he crowns you with love and compassion. So we need to be marked by kindness, by compassion. And then we need to be always ready to forgive because we are forgiven in Christ. So we have to be, we have to be people who have the spirit of forgiveness about us, that have the spirit of holding back and grudging. Okay, so those are the three components. What do they look like? How do these break the chains of anger? Well, let me go through them again in a little more detail. Kindness, that breaks the chain of bitterness and resentment. When you let anger rule over you, you resent what somebody did to you. And you're controlled by it. And a spirit of bitterness comes in. And that was, remember, that was the first component of being ruled by anger that we saw last night. We've got to break that. So the bitterness, the spirit of bitterness, it's broken, the chains of bitterness are broken when we see God being kind to us, therefore we can extend kindness to others. The second area where anger wraps its chains around us is the chains of justice, retribution, and payback. When you're consumed with what somebody's done wrong to you and you can't let it go, And you spend minutes, hours, sometimes days, weeks, people I've counseled years, literally, just being wrapped up and wanting payback and wanting justice and wanting retribution. And those are God's areas, not ours. So in response to that, Paul says to the Spirit of God, we need to develop a spirit of a tender-heartedness, of being compassionate. Again, Psalm 103 helps us out here. God does not, in verse 10, Psalm 103, God does not treat us as our sins deserve, or repay us according to our iniquities. God is not doing that to me. I don't need to carry that spirit against someone else. Paul says that love keeps no record of wrongs. But if we remember all the wrong things that were done to us and it consumes us, those chains cannot be broken. 
But if we remember God's faithfulness, his compassion to us, the fact that he doesn't treat us as our sins deserve, that other people's sins don't need to control me, then those chains are broken as well. And then lastly, forgiveness breaks the chain of angry memories. Much in the spirit of what we just talked about, we remember things, and those memories stay with us, and they consume us. Instead, as when we take the Lord's Supper, we need to be consumed with remembering what Christ has done for each of us. That's where our hope is. So in the place of these chains of bad memories, we need to replace it the back with the freedom that we've been forgiven in Christ and look for opportunities to forgive. You can't force forgiveness on someone, but you can always be ready to forgive. You can be full of kindness and compassion and overflowing with forgiveness. And then the way Paul wraps, wraps this up is this is what Jesus has done for us, right? He's been kind to us. He's been tender, hearted, and compassionate to us. And he forgives us. Those three things, kindness, tender-hearted compassion, and pursuing forgiveness whenever you can, that breaks the chains of anger and frees us to know the joy of what Jesus has done for us. Let this work its way into your relationships. Don't be dominated by anger. Be dominated by kindness, compassion, tender-hearted spirit, and forgiveness. That breaks us free from the chains of anger. And that's where real hope is. Think about that. Again, love your thoughts and feedback. Excited about tomorrow. And uh, again, such a blessing to be with you. Thank you for the honor and privilege of being able to talk to you every day. You have a great evening. We'll see you soon. Good night. Thank you for watching. May God richly bless you as you seek to live for His glory.